So hopefully you had a chance to try to create the code that I asked you to create in module 6.6. .6. Uh, in this particular module, let me show you how this, uh, how I created my solution. Turns out the actual code is fairly simple, but there's a number of, of things you have to manage all at once in your head. And so if you struggled with this, I completely understand. But let's see how this works. So the first thing we have to do is actually create the block. So I'm going to say more blocks. I want to make a block, and I wrote my block. I said, I want to start with the text polygon of, and then I want to have a number in there. So again, I'll drop down the options, and I'll say, I want to put a number in here. And this was some number of sides, so number of sides. Then I want to add some more text that actually says that. So polygon of you know four sides of length. And then when I'm done, I want to have one a second input in there that is uh, the size or the length. Okay, so let me create that block. Right, and so what I get now is here's my block polygon of you know I had drawn this I had done this out three times, and I had said create for me a polygon of six sides and four sides and three sides, and I want each, to, each of them of those shapes to start with size 100. Right? So that's how I want to use this function. But of course, I haven't written the function yet. But that's how I want to use the function. And that gave me that really nice sort of symmetrical, uh, they, they shared a top because they all had size 100 as their first side. But now I need to create this code. Well, you, we know that if I'm going to do a polygon of six sides or four sides or three sides, the first thing I'm going to need is a loop. And that loop has to create that number of sides. So I need this value here, this number that was put in as my repeat. So repeat six times, repeat four times, repeat three times, whatever it's going to be. I want to repeat some number of times. And each time, then, I want to move forward. right? And I want to move forward not 10 steps, but whatever they gave me here. So they told me how far to move forward. In my code up top, I said move 100. But you'll remember in the video for uh, module 6.6, .6, I, I moved you know, 100 some, 150 one time, and 200. It doesn't matter. It's whatever the user puts in here. We want to move forward that number of steps. And now, finally, we need to rotate some number of degrees. And again, you have to go back to what we did calculation-wise uh, earlier in, in Module 3 when we did this. We said that if it, I know that when I complete my polygon, I need to make a total turn of 360 degrees, but it's, it's, that's going to be divided among the number of sides on my shape. So I need to drag out the division block here, and I need to say, drag forward or turn 360 degrees divided by however many sides are in my shape. So when I make a triangle, that's three sides. 360 divided by three is a 120 degree turn per turn. Right? And when I make a, a, a hexagon, 360 divided by six is 60 degrees per turn. And, and that's it. It really isn't complicated code once you see it, but you had to work through it. And again, look how much how nice this is. I can just say, build me a polygon of six sides of length 100. And all the details are hidden in this, in this function, in this block, that say, you know, no matter what parameters I put in here, just do this. And this is much easier than having this code repeated three times up here. And so now I can run this code, and we get exactly what we just were looking at. A hexagon of side 100, a square of size 100, and a triangle of size 100. And if I want to change one of these, right, make this 200, not even remotely a problem. I get a very versatile set of code that allows me to modify my polygons all with simple parameter changes. Very versatile, very helpful, uh, something that you may or may not use with your students, but something that's worth understanding how it works and how to get it to work when your students say, what is this?